stress. A person with autism spectrum disorder usually has a hard time living up to the demands of his surrounding, which in turn often leads to stress reactions. Constantly living in an environment where the demands are too high saps a lot of energy. As you will see in this film about Christina and Carl, two people with autism spectrum disorder, they are affected more by stress and low energy than people in general. Using two colored bars as a visual aid, we will show you how stress and energy levels can affect the day-to-day -day lives of people with autism spectrum disorder. The inability to handle a situation can lead to excessive stress in a person with autism spectrum disorder. Stress can in turn lead to different reactions, in particular anxiety and sadness, but also to a worsening of compulsive behavior. In extreme cases, psychotic states can occur as a result of stress. This is Carl. He's very interested in math. Carl has Asperger's syndrome, which in his case means that he needs home care support. This is Christina. She can speak fluent Japanese and solve complicated Japanese sudokus. Christina also has Asperger's syndrome and has home care support to help her in her day-to-day -day life. Carl and Christina have made contact with each other through a dating site. They will be meeting in person the next day. Carl has invited Christina to his place for dinner. Due to noisy neighbors, Carl slept very poorly. When Carl is tired, all of his senses become overly sensitive. Today, Carl's energy level is low and he already feels stressed. Christina, on the other hand, wakes up refreshed. Christina is very sensitive to sound, but her apartment has been soundproofed as a home modification. This is how Christina's energy and stress bars look this morning. Carl realizes that he has shopping to do, so he calls his home carer, Oliver. But Carl, you get home care on Mondays. But I, I'm going to Christina. Christina is coming here today, and I'm making dinner. You already told me that, Carl. But good luck with your date. Carl understands that he needs to take the bus by himself to do the grocery shopping. Carl does not like to ride the bus. He doesn't like all the crowding or all the people, and he cannot stand all the noises on the bus. This is how Carl's stress and energy levels are affected by riding the bus. Hi Christina. We were going to see each other today instead of our regular time, so that I could tag along when you go to buy a dress for your date. We're going to need three things with us. Your mobile phone, so people can reach you. Your sunglasses, so you aren't bothered by the sunlight. And your mp3, so you don't hear all the annoying sounds on the bus. This is how Christina's stress and energy levels look when she's riding the bus. The clothing store is full of colors and sounds, which makes Christina feel lost. Molly knows that Christina is sensitive to prickly materials and zips, so she helps Christina find a dress in her favorite color. This is how Christina's stress and energy levels look after she tried on the dress. Perception is the brain's ability to identify, differentiate, understand and react to impressions from different senses. To have an overall or whole experience of an event, the various impressions must be coordinated. A person with autism spectrum disorder has a different way of perceiving, coordinating and giving meaning to their impressions. They can have difficulty switching between different sensory impressions and using several senses simultaneously. Many also find it difficult to separate out impressions automatically. These coordination problems affect the ability to shift attention. In situations where the individual feels tired or stressed, these types of difficulties increase. To make sense of existence, it is necessary to be able to understand general contexts and disregard non-essentials.
Most people that do not have autism spectrum disorder have a brain that automatically makes the world understandable and predictable. It creates an overall picture of a situation by taking a sort of bird's eye view. People with autism spectrum disorder begins at the other end, perceiving and building a view of the world from details, like puzzle pieces being laid out one at a time. They cannot observe everything simultaneously, so when details are changed, they can become distressed or confused. To them, when just a small detail is changed, the whole is different. Once you understand this, you will understand why change can make people with autism spectrum disorder unhappy. Milk. And you will understand why they need to be carefully prepared for anything new. I have milk in a triangular package. You will also understand why they prefer routines, situations they are familiar with, and situations where they have an overview. In a world where everything changes, even if one detail changes, it is not only unpredictable, but arbitrary and very energy draining. View, that was hard, but here's the supermarket. Wait, what was I going to buy? I can't remember. Oh, silly me. I will just make a call. What? The battery is dead. What should I buy? What should I buy? What should I buy? Oh, right. I will just get some Barilla spaghetti and Felix ketchup. Hmm. Not that one. Not that one either. They don't have Barilla spaghetti. What should I buy? What should I buy? What should I buy? Cola and chips is not exactly what Carl had planned on buying. This is how Carl's stress and energy levels look now. Alright then, now that we're done with the shopping, let's have a coffee at your favorite place, the Teacup Cafe. Sure, let's do that. Oh, look at these tables, they're really pretty. I reckon they must be new. Mm. Because Molly has taken several courses and has a solid knowledge of autism spectrum disorder, she realizes that something is wrong. Do you feel stressed out because of the new tables, Christina? Yeah. Because of this, Molly takes Christina to a different cafe. This is how Christina's stress and energy levels look right now. Executive functions. The ability to follow a strategy to achieve a goal. The ability to shift attention. The ability to plan, organize, be flexible and evaluate. Plus working memory are usually summarized as executive functions. These functions are located in the frontal lobe. Difficulty with executive functions usually means difficulty with the perception of time. Bill does not understand why the neighbors are banging and yelling outside of his door. He's scared. He's scared that they will hurt him. But in reality, they are just playing loud music at night. Executive difficulties means that the individual has a hard time seeing a correlation between, for example, a rent slip, rent that has not been paid, an eviction notice, and the subsequent eviction. The person does not draw conclusions from past experiences and does not learn from his mistakes. It can be just as hard to imagine coming time, that is, future time. In autism spectrum disorder, a lack of simultaneous capacity is more a rule than an exception. Orienting oneself in a room while at the same time remembering what one is supposed to do can easily lead to confusion. To carry out a task, it has to be broken down into steps. Making a step-by-step -step list often makes the task easier to do. You, home at last. But man, it's messy in here. 
I'm going to have to clean for my day tonight. <sighs> hey, these are some notes from that course on sustainability. Hmm. Uh huh. Hmm. I see, yes. Oh no, look at the time! Hmm, it's been a while since I shook out this rug. One, two, three! Ah! Hold on a minute, Christina. Was there something you were going to do before vacuuming? Have you checked your cleaning schedule? Uh, tidy up, do the dishes, and, uh, do the laundry. Oh, there. I've tidied up so that you could start with the vacuuming while I take out the trash. Now that we're done with the vacuuming, you can water the houseplants and I'll put away the vacuum cleaner and turn on the washing machine. There, I watered all of the houseplants now. Then we're done. <laughs> that went fast. Yeah, it did. Oh no, now the phone is ringing. But where is it? What? It stopped ringing. I wonder who it was. Maybe Oliver. He was going to remind me about... My bills! I've got to pay my bills! Where did I put them? Damn it! Freaking papers! Oh, come on! Why does everything always disappear? And now when the cleaning's done, it's time for the monthly bills. But you'll manage that yourself. Tell me if you need any help. Let's see. Bills here. Security token here. Hmm. Step one. Turn on the security token. There! Now I'm done! That went pretty fast. You put the binder back on the third shelf where you found it, Christina, and then we'll grab a cup of coffee. I don't know what to do. Maybe Oliver can help me. Zap, Carl! Come for a visit, have you? Yeah, I'm meeting Christina today. Oh, right! <laughs> Give all you got, huh? <laughs> no, but seriously, you gotta be proud seeing as you've got a date to look forward to this evening. Yeah, yeah, but it's hard. Got butterflies in your stomach, eh? <laughs> That's how it should be. But you gotta be strong, dude, like me. Check out these muscles, huh? <laughs> no, but seriously, it's going to be fine. Anyway, I need some coffee. Carl is now very nervous about meeting Christina, but since he didn't show it, Oliver never understood how bad Carl was feeling. If Carl were able to show how he felt with his body language and facial expressions, then he might have looked a bit like this. Then Oliver would have understood the gravity of the situation. A person with autism spectrum disorder will often have a hard time reading other people. But it is also very hard for people who do not have autism spectrum disorder to read people who do have the diagnosis. I wonder how it's going to go tonight. Are you worried about tonight? Yeah. Molly knows that it is not possible to read Christina based on her body language or facial expressions. Therefore, she uses a scale from 1 to 10. How worried are you on a scale from 1 to 10? 8. Oi, what makes you so worried? Well, that Carl is gonna think that I'm boring. Do you mean that you're not too good at talking when you don't know what to say? Mm. We can make a social script with suggestions of things to say to Carl this evening. Yeah. Okay, let's see. You've rung the doorbell and Carl opens the door. You can say, hi Carl, thanks for inviting me over. 
If you smell food, you could say, something smells good. Then Carl will show you to his kitchen or to his dining room. Once you've had a bite to eat, you could say, this tastes great. Carl has cooked the food, so he will be delighted to hear that. If Carl doesn't say anything, and if you want to talk to him, you could always ask if he's got any hobbies. After he tells you about his hobbies, you can say, how interesting. Then you could tell him something about your hobby. Christina feels a lot calmer now that she has created an image of what might happen this evening when she meets Carl. Oh, Christina is here, and I am in the middle of an important raid in World of Warcraft. Hi, Carl. Thanks for inviting me over. I'm in the middle of an important raid in World of Warcraft right now. I will see you later. Um, then I was supposed to say something smells good. But it just smells stale. Where should I put my jacket? I guess I'll just lay it down here with everything else. I've got to get done with this raid so I can meet Christina. I'm getting tired. I guess I'll just find a chair. That took a long time. Yeah, I had to finish my raid. He's standing so close and he's staring at me. I've got to greet her now. Should I shake her hand? Hug her? Yes, of course! I welcome thee, my lady. And nobody has ever kissed my hand before. Okay. Are we gonna eat now? Eat? Uh, yeah, um, this way. What have you cooked? Well, I got all messed up when I went to the supermarket. So it's potato chips and coke. Mmm, this was tasty. What was I supposed to say next? I have to say something good. Mutual communication. The main difficulty of people with autism spectrum disorder lies in communication with other people. They often interpret language literally and have difficulty understanding sarcasm. They also have a hard time understanding things that are unspoken, such as, so to speak, reading between the lines. People with autism spectrum disorder can have a hard time processing the information they get from others during a conversation, or they can be so busy figuring out what they want to say that they miss vital parts of a conversation. When they finally say what they had thought about saying, it can be too late, and the comment may no longer suit the conversation. The rhythm of the conversation is then lost. Most people with autism spectrum disorder have problems answering open questions, such as, what do you need help with? Therefore, it is important to formulate questions appropriately. When you said that you were inviting me over for dinner, I didn't think that you were going to serve chips and cola. If I don't say anything interesting, she will think I'm really boring. Because this isn't exactly what I call dinner. Isn't he listening to me? I've got to say something smart. Blah 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 blah. I don't even understand what she's saying. How about you? Can you speak another language? He seems to think that everything I'm saying is totally uninteresting. Many people think that King Gustav III was first and foremost a warrior king, but they haven't understood that... Kings? I don't know anything about kings. He was actually quite ignorant. Ignorant? Oh, he's figured out that I don't know anything about kings, and now he thinks I'm ignorant. I knew that he thought that I was stupid. Blah, 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 blah. She doesn't seem to be listening to what I'm saying. Maybe she can't hear. 
And that's why King Carl the Twelfth visited... Ouch! Stop yelling! I know that you think that I'm stupid, but you don't have to yell. I've had enough of your stupid kings. I'm going home to eat some real food. Bye. Energy level below zero. Game over. You might think that social scripts are worthless and that it is impossible for two people with autism spectrum disorder to have a proper date. This is not true. Sometimes, however, you have to work a little harder to solve a problem. The next day, Carl visited his home carer. Oliver obviously needed training and Molly became his supervisor. Oliver became a significantly more competent home carer. Knowledge can lead development forward. Thanks to Oliver's new insights and changed attitudes, our story ends like this. It's such a nice day for a picnic And maybe a swim, though it's ice cold